الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قال ابن القيم رحمه الله تعالى قد جعل الله سبحانه وتعالى لكل مطلوب مفتاحا يفتح به فجعل مفتاح الصلاة الطهور كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مفتاح الصلاة الطهور ومفتاح الحج الإحرام ومفتاح البر الصدق ومفتاح الجنة التوحيد ومفتاح العلم حسن السؤال وحسن الإصغاء ومفتاح النصر الظفر يعني الصبر ومفتاح المزيد الشكر ومفتاح الولاية والمحبة الذكر ومفتاح الفلاح التقوى ومفتاح التوفيق الرغبة والرهبة ومفتاح الإجابة الدعاء ومفتاح الرغبة في الآخرة الزهد في الدنيا ومفتاح الإيمان التفكر فيما دعا الله سبحانه وتعالى عباده إلى التفكر فيه ومفتاح الدخول على الله جل وعلا إسلام القلب وسلامته له والإخلاص له في الحب والبغض والفعل والترك ومفتاح حياة القلب تدبر القرآن وتضرع بالأسحار وترك الذنوب ومفتاح الحصول الرحمة الإحسان إلى عبادة الله جل وعلا والسعي في نفع نفع عبيده ومفتاح الرزق السعي مع الاستغفار والتقوى ومفتاح العز طاعة الله جل وعلا ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم ومفتاح الاستعداد للآخرة قصر الأمل ومفتاح كل خير الرغبة في الله جل وعلا والدار الآخرة ومفتاح كل شر حب الدنيا وطول الأمل The title of this passage is المفاتيح The keys to everything Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said for every desired thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for it a miftah, a key Anything that you desire there's a key to get it He says so the key to salah is tahur, is purification and if you notice the salah can be accepted with the neglect of anything with the exception of purification even some of the shurut of salah if you pray before the time you pray salatul dhuhr before the time for the salatul dhuhr comes in it's counted as a nafira it's counted as a supererogatory it's a sunnah prayer it's not wasted, it's not neglected. If you pray without rukur or sujood, forgetting, forgetting it, then there's other things that you can do to make up for it. If you pray without sujood, you forgot to make sujood, there's other ways. There's nothing that you can make up for with the, uh, with the exception of, of tahara. That if you forget to pray, if you forget to make tahara, you have to make the prayer over. By no means is it accepted. He says, so the miftah, the key to salah, is tahur, is purification. He said, miftah hajj al-ihram. And the key to hajj is ihram. Ihram is not the clothing that you put on, the rida and the izar. Ihram is the niyyah, the intention that you make to go into the state of ihram. He said that the key to al-bir, the key to righteousness, is sidq, is honesty. The key to Jannah, Miftah al Jannah, a Tawheed. The key to paradise is Tawheed. As Wahab ibn Munabbih, Rahimallah ta'ala, was asked, Alaysa Miftah al Jannah la ilaha illallah? Qala na'am, Qala bala, Walakin laysa hunaka Miftah illa wa lahu asnan, Faida jitta ila al bab wa lahu al asnan, Futi halak wa illa fala. He said, He was asked, Isn't the key to paradise la ilaha illallah? He said, Of course it is. But there's no key except that it has teeth, it has ridges. He said, and if you come to the door with the right teeth, on the right key, the door will open for you. And if not, then it will not. And of course, if la ilaha illallah is the miftah, is the key to paradise, the teeth on that key are the, the uh, shurut of la ilaha illallah, or the conditions of la ilaha illallah, which are seven. 
العلم واليقين والقبول والانتياد فدر ما أقول والإخلاص وصدق ومعبة وفقك الله لما أحبه هي سوى مفتاح ومفتاح العلم حسن السؤال وحسن الإصغاء that the key to knowledge is asking the right questions and comprehending and understanding the answers as Abdullah bin Abbas was asked كيف وصلت إلى هذا العلم قال وصلت إلى هذا العلم ب بلسان سؤول وقلب عقول he said I arrived at this level of knowledge by asking many questions and by understanding and comprehending the answers he said ومفتاح النصر الصبر and the key to earning Allah subhanahu wa taala's help is with patience as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said وعلم أن النصر مع الصبر and know that Assistance from Allah comes with being patient. Comes with being patient. He said, "Wa miftahu al mazid al shukr," and the key to getting more from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is by being grateful. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "Wa la in shakaratum la azidannakum." That if you show gratitude, I'll give you more. So the key to getting more from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is showing gratitude, a shukr lillahi jalla wa ala. He said, وَمِفْتَحُ الْوِلَايَ وَالْمَحَبَّةَ الذِّكْرُ ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَىٰ That the key to earning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wilaya, his guardianship, and his love is by remembering him. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in Hadith al-Qudsi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّي عَبْدِي بِي وَأَنَا مَعَهُ إِذَا ذَكَرَنِي That I am as my servant thinks I am, and I am with him when he remembers me. When you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's there. And he's not there in essence. They said be that to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lakin ma'a nasri. That he is there with his ta'yeed, his aid, and his assistance. Not in his essence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, وَالْمِفْتَاحُ التَّوْفِيقُ الرَّغْبَ وَرَهْنَ That the key to success is to live between fear and hope. To live your life in this dunya between fear and hope. Fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَا يَقْبَلْ مِنْكَ وَلَا شَيْئًا that Allah will not accept anything from you and hope for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And the key to iman or, or the key to ijabah, a dua miftah al ijabah, a dua The key to having Allah respond to you is calling on him. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to respond to you, then you have to call on him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb ujibu da'wat al-da'i idha da'an that if my servants ask you about me, then tell them that I'm near. I respond to the dua of everyone that calls on me. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ijaba, you want his response, then you have to call on him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, And the key to having a desire for the hereafter is staying away from the dunya. Staying away from this dunya. Izhad fi dunya. يحبك الله إزهد في ما عند الناس يحبك الناس. As one of the Sahaba asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, how do I earn Allah's love and the love of the people? He said, stay away from what the people possess and the people will love you, and stay away from the dunya and Allah سبحانه وتعالى will love you. He said, ومفتاح الدخو مفتاح مفتاح الإيمان التفكر فيما دع الله إباده إلى التفكر فيه. That the مفتاح that the key to إيمان is to contemplate and reflect over the things that Allah سبحانه وتعالى commands His servants to ponder and reflect on. All throughout the Quran, Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentions أفلا يتفكر. Don't you contemplate over this. Don't you contemplate on that. Take a walk through the earth and see what was the end result of the people that came before. These are the things that built Iman. That the key to earning a close place to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is submitting your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submission of the heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ikhlas lahu and being sincere to him fi hubbik wa buqdik in your love and in your hate. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man aghta lillah, wa man aghd lillah, wa ahabb lillah, wa abghad lill lillah, faqad istakmal imana." 
that whoever gives for Allah, withholds for Allah, loves for Allah, and hates for Allah, then has completed his iman. He has perfected his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Wa miftah al hayat al qalb, tadabbur al Quran. And the key to giving your heart life is pondering and reflecting on the Quran. The Prophet وسلم, supplicated, he said, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa lak, sammayta bihi nafsak, aw anzaltahu fi kitabik, aw allamta ahadan min qalbik, aw ahadan min, min, min khalqik, aw asta'atharatahu fi ilmin ghaybi min indik, and taj'ala al-Qur'an al-Azim rabi' al-Qalbi. That, oh Allah, I ask you about every name that you have called yourself, or you have revealed in your book, or you have taught to, or you have revealed it in your book, or you have taught one of your servants, or the names that you have kept hidden with you in the knowledge of the unseen, that you make the Qur'an Rabi al-Qalbi. You make it the life of my heart. You make it the life of my heart. And he said, وَمِفْتَحُ الْحُصُولَ الرَّحْمَةِ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَىٰ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ That the key to earning Allah's mercy is being merciful to the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, من لا يرحم لا يرحم He who does not show mercy to other people will not get mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الرَّاحِمُونَ يَرْحَمُهُمُ الرَّحْمَانِ يَرْحَمْ مِنْ فِي الْعَرْضِ يَرْحَمُكُمْ مِنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ the Ar-Rahimun are those who are merciful. Ar-Rahman will have mercy upon them. Show mercy to those whom are on the earth and the one that is above the heavens will show mercy to you. Miftahu husul al-Rahma al-Ihsan ila ibadatillahi jalla wa ala. Ibadillah. That you earn the mercy, the key to earning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is having mercy on his creation. Wa miftahu al-Rizq al-Sa'i ma'a al-Istighfar wa taqwa that the key to earning Allah's provision, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as ar-razaq, wa fi samai rizqukum wa ma tu'adun, and in the heavens is your provision in which you have been promised. Your provision is not on the dirt, or not on the dunya, not in this, in this world. Your provision is written for you in the heaven, in loh and mahbub. What you are decreed to have is not here in this dunya, it's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the key to earning that is number one, a sa'i, to go after, you can't get Allah's provision if you don't go after it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khalaqa sabab wa khalaqa al-asbab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the decree and he also created the means by which you earn the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wrote the decree in the loh and mahfuz, in the preserved tablet. But the only way that you will get what Allah decreed for you to have is if you go after it. You can't, if Allah decreed for you to have children, Children are not going to come to you unless you go get married and then you do what married people do to gain children. It's not going to happen if you don't go after it. So there is what are known as asbab, the means by which we earn what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. So the key to earning Allah's rizq, his provision is a sa'i, is going after what he decreed for us to have, ma'ala istighfar wa taqwa, while seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and being fearful of him. وَمِفْتَحُ الْعِزِّ And the key to earning honor is with ta'a. Ta'at Allahi wa Rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger. Obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger, that is how we get honor. We get honor in this dunya by obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in the last days that nations will gather around to devour the Muslims like a group of people gather around a plate of food to devour its contents. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Sallatallahu alaykum dhullan la yarfa'u hatta tarji'u ila deenikum. That Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will place humiliation over you as a ummah and will not lift it off of you until you return back to your deen. And our deen is obeying Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and obeying His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa miftah al-isti'dad lil-akhirah qasr al-amal. And the key to preparing yourself for the hereafter is not living in this life like you're going to live forever. The Prophet said, Kun fi dunya ka That be in this dunya as if you are a gharib, a stranger, or just someone passing through. We don't live in this life like this is the end all be all, like this is it. 
And if we're preparing ourselves for the hereafter, we do that by qasr al-amal, not hoping to live for a long time in this dunya. And the key to desiring good, uh, the key to every good is desiring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the home of the hereafter. And the key to every evil is hubb dunya is love of this dunya wa amal and desiring to live a long time. Wanting to live in this dunya a long time. That is the key to every evil. And this is just a passage that he has in his book and something that we can take um, some time to kind of ponder and reflect over. Uh, and one of the most powerful things that he mentioned, all of the things were powerful, but, you know, miftah al-mazid al-shukr, that the key to getting more from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being grateful, showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want more from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that is we get more from him by showing our gratitude to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions that gratitude has three pillars. Arkan, shukr, salatha. There's three pillars to gratitude. Number one, al-i'tiraf bi anna ni'ma kulli ni'ma indik min indi Allahi jala wa ala wa laysa min indik. That every blessing that you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not from yourself. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ That you have no blessing except that it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of how it was given to you, regardless of how it was facilitated to you, the ultimate is where it came from is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not from something that you did on your own, not because of what your own hands have done, but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala تَفَضَّلَ عَلَيْكَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to bestow his bounty upon you. Number two from the condition or from the pillars of gratitude is al-istimal and ni'ma fima yurdillah is to use the blessing in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it that Allah blesses you with something and you take what he blessed you with and you use it in a manner that is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That you take the ni'ma, you take the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, gave you and you use it in a manner that is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to use the blessing in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, from the arakana shukra, from the pillars of gratitude, is to narrate it, to talk about the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with this and blessed you with that. And of course, this should be done with hadhar. This should be done with caution because there are some people that do not, do not like good for you. There are some people who don't want good for you. And if you mention your blessing in front of them, perhaps they will uh, be jealous of you or envious of you. And this, inshallah ta'ala, will begin to affect you and affect your blessing, which is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, استعينوا, uh, ala that to seek assistance with the success of your affairs by hiding it from people because everyone that has a blessing will be envied. That everyone that has a blessing will be envied by someone. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kithira wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.